and welcome to Inside EcoDevo, an economic development podcast helping Missourians prosper. On this episode, we're talking about the economic research efforts happening inside the department. And sitting down with us to help with the discussion is Jeff Pinkerton, Director of Economic Research. Jeff, welcome. Thanks for sitting down with us. Great to be here, Eric. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Uh, So before we jump into today's topic, if you could just give a little bit of background on yourself. How did you come to be the Director of Economic Research? Sure. Well, I came to DED uh, uh, in March of uh, 2020, right when COVID was uh, shutting things down. Best time to start with a new (laughs) team. (laughs) Trial by fire, uh, for sure. Uh, I I come to DED from uh, the Mid-America Regional Council. We're the Metropolitan uh, Planning Organization in the Kansas City area. I worked there for about 20 years uh, doing economic demographic research in the Kansas City area. Prior to that, uh, some work with uh, the downtown council and Chamber of Commerce in Kansas City, but I've always been in the the general economic development. I've been fascinated about economic development and and the impact that it can have on people's lives. So this opportunity to work at the state level uh, was really exciting for me. Yeah. What was it that kind of made you want to go in that direction? Yeah, just I I think the opportunity in in, in talking with uh, Paul, uh, my my boss at the time, um, he was telling me that the door is kind of open. We want to be more data driven. We want to understand the economy and where it's going and how that can impact the work we do as an economic development agency. So I thought it was really a good opportunity for me to, to have an impact on the state. So i uh, excited to be uh, living that out. Yeah. Well, let's jump into it. Tell me about economic research work that is happening inside the department. I know that's a very vague question, <laughs> yeah. and I'm sure it could encompass a lot, but tell me about what you do, what's going on. Yeah, it, it does encompass a lot, but I, I think I can get it down into three different buckets. I think the first thing we do is kind of keep our, our fingers on the pulse of the economy overall, and that's been really important in the, as of late. You know, the economy is, at this point, very tumultuous right now, uh, things like interest rates and inflation rates and all these things that are kind of out there on the, you know, the the economic wonks talk about, but those things have a real big impact on Missouri businesses right now. You know, interest rates are keeping people from, you know, making investments. The economy is very tight labor market. Businesses are having a hard time finding workers. So these big time economic issues are really hitting, you know, Missouri businesses straight on. So I think there's, there's that kind of keeping our fingers on the pulse of that. The second bucket would be more helping our regional engagement team and our local economic development partners throughout the state have access to the most current data that's available to help them, you know, perhaps land a business or, or work with businesses so, that, so they can expand. That could be things like understanding where their labor shed comes from. You know, we have a, a smaller town in Missouri with a population of X, but do they draw people from a larger area and do they understand where their population is coming from? Do they understand what their industry mix is and how that may have changed over the last several years? So getting that information out to folks is that second bucket. And I think the third one we're kind of really starting to get into is more of a strategic planning type. Uh, you know, this this broad economy is changing so much. A lot of it has been pushed by post-pandemic and, and, and the economy is really remarkably changing. How do we make sure Missouri is adapting to those changes and so we can continue to be a thriving economy? So I think those three areas really kind of encapsulate the heart and soul of our work. I know we have people within the department that work in data in in one form or the other, but do we have a collective team of researcher and data people, I guess, that you're leading? Yeah, it's, um, you know, it's kind of an all hands on deck. We're a small department within uh, strategy and performance. A couple of names I've shout out. You mentioned uh, data. I rely heavily on uh, Julie Saperstein. She is a data guru. She loves swimming in data. She loves uh, formatting data and making sense of data. She also runs our economic impact analysis. So when we're looking at some projects, you know, what's the economic return to the state? Very important part of us assessing how our programs are working. So Julie uh, works close with me on uh, a lot of this stuff. And we just recently brought on uh, Stefan Herring, who is kind of more on the larger, the big picture strategic planning. He's got a really good background in long-term strategic planning, and he's bringing that expertise as well. So uh, he he just came on a couple of weeks ago, and we're kind of planning out what we're going to be doing uh, with his expertise. But yeah, it's a small growing shop, but uh, we're getting the work done. (laughs) And when you guys are looking at the data and all the different kinds of categories, I'll say, for lack of a better term. Like, how are you guys gleaning this information? And, and again, I'm coming at this from a, a, totally uh, having no <laughs> expertise in, in data and all, but how do you guys get the information, the numbers, and then make sense of it? 
Yeah, well, part of it is just knowing where to go to, to find the numbers. There's no shortage of economic data sources out there, but knowing which one is pertinent to what you're looking into is, is important. So a lot of that, quite frankly, just comes from experience and in, in knowing the true purpose of some of that data and then expressing that and helping our regional engagement folks and our local partners understand which data to use in certain questions is important. And a lot of it also, I think, is you know almost a translating or uh, you know visualizing the data that, you know, I swim in Excel all day long. I look at tables and to make it make sense to folks, there's a part of it that has to be converted into charts and graphs that are understandable and some summary text to say, this is what's really important with all this data. So that's what we try to do uh, in research, just try to make you know the, these big data a little bit more actionable and practical for, for people because it does have a big impact on people's lives. So it's important that they understand the bare essence of this data so they can plan or adjust to that, what, what the data is telling us. Are there any particular kinds of trends that you guys are looking at right now? Yeah, I think uh, right now, the current state of the economy has really been the important factor to what we've been, been contributing to the DED mostly uh, over the last year or so. And that's, we do a weekly uh, economic report that's really just kind of, hey, this is what happened this past week. This, this is the data that's changing. And again, it's that big kind of esoteric economic talk, but it does have that Main Street impact. And if you don't uh, understand that, you're going to miss you know, the opportunities to adjust and adapt to that. So I think we're seeing a lot of interesting trends coming out of the pandemic and the data is spelling that out. I think one of the biggest ones we're seeing is the labor market. It's a tight labor market. Our businesses throughout Missouri have to deal with a lot of things. But right now, number one, for most businesses, what they'll tell you is, I can't find enough people. You know, I may be operating a restaurant, you know, at 80% capacity because I can't fill enough people. I might be operating a manufacturing plant with 75% capacity because I can't find enough workers. Uh, that's a real big uh, issue. And uh, I think it's kind of a direct result of what's happened during the pandemic and how we're growing out of that, hopefully growing out of that. So it's the macro economy, if you will, and its impact on the micro business level. I think that's really most urgent right now. And you were mentioning the the data that you guys pull for the regional engagement team is one of the categories, what you were just talking about there, the kind of workforce element of it, what other kind of categories, and I, and I keep using categories because I don't yeah. know the other term to use, so hopefully <laughs> that's correct. What else besides the workforce part of it is useful for regional engagement? Yeah, well, when I talk about the workforce, you know, there's just the sheer numbers. Do I have the population? Do I have the workforce to take those jobs? But really, when you get underneath the hood, it's like, what is your industry mix in a particular region and how has that changed? So businesses want to know, you know, is, is the industry I'm in growing in a certain area? Are there opportunities to, to go into a region? I really think our economic development partners throughout the state need to understand fully the changes that are going on. I think we look at a city and we understand its economy. I think that sometimes we assume that the economy is kind of consistent. It's going to be persist over time. And in this environment, things are changing so very rapidly. You need to kind of understand some of those businesses that you thought were bedrock of your community. They're, you know, they're vulnerable to, to change. And we've got to make sure they're able to adapt to that change. They can pivot. And you also need to be on the outlook for those, those little blips on the radar that really aren't in your conscience, but something that's potential to grow and become the next big business in your community that can grow jobs. So there's a lot out there. To, you could spend your day looking at data and trying to understand it. What we try to do is say, these are the areas you really need to focus on perhaps and bring that information to the forefront so they can respond and, and maybe make some strategic plans that will change the course of their community for the better on an economic sense. It sounds like those trends are kind of in a constant flux. How do you keep up with that? How do you be able to look at the numbers and then kind of decipher where it's going to go? Yeah, it's economics. Uh, it, it's it's a, definitely a soft science. I mean, there's a lot of numbers in it. We can make charts that look very official and concrete, but um, you know, oftentimes that data gets amended, and you know, what you thought was a trend was just a blip on the map. So it's very difficult to to do that. I think um, you know, economists are, are better at forecasting backwards than they are are forwards. So um, that said. You know, I think we, we push information out. We say, this is what the data tells us. And I'm always very cautious to say, take it with a little bit of a grain of salt, because let's look at this trend over time to see if what we see that has happened in the last few months, is that going to persist over time? If it happens six months, a year, okay, maybe something's ha actually happened there. So part of what we do, you know, we give, give the data and say, here's what it shows, but not to take away from its validity, but to just emphasize that this is the trend. And let's keep an eye on that trend and see if it really becomes something that we can maybe plan around. So a lot of it's kind of 
going in with a somewhat a expectation, but knowing we have to be flexible and adapt as this changes, we need to change with it. Absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's well said. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what is the data telling us right now? And I'm using kind of data as the big blanket. I'm sure you're kind of looking at certain very micro parts of that, but what is what you're being asked to look at? What's it telling us at the moment? Yeah. Well, um, I'll take this on two different, uh, you know, a, a kind of a micro level and then and a broader uh, macro level. So on the, on the micro level, we talked about the workforce and that's just been a key driver for the economy. The economy is adding jobs right now. We're, we're growing, we're back to where we were for pre-pandemic, just a little bit above where we were pre-pandemic. Had we not had the pandemic recession, our labor force would probably be much higher than it is right now. Even though we're growing or adding jobs, we're still in a way that our labor force is smaller than it was before the pandemic. So they're there are fewer people out there in the workforce who are employed and or looking for work. And the unemployment rate in Missouri, I believe, is 2.7% right now. Very, very low, very tight labor market. So that's a big problem for businesses, you know, just being able to, to grow and expand. If employees, finding employees is, is what it's keeping you from expanding. That's that's a problem. I guess on the good side is we're not alone in this. This is a national trend. You know, every state in the, in the country is, is dealing with this employment problem. So I think until our population grows and we're adding our, getting our labor force to grow, I think we need to start looking at other things, you know, be very creative with our training. Are we, are we training folks for the right opportunities? I know you had Christy on with, with one start and they do that an excellent job of that working with businesses, finding out what kind of skills that they're looking for and getting that training. So the workforce is there when those, those businesses need them. I think more of that work can be done that we can make sure we're, we're doing a good job if the numbers aren't there, but if we have the right type of skills for tomorrow's jobs, I think that would behoove us to you know help our economy keep growing. Anything that you're kind of looking at right now that you're like, this could be something like this looks like it could be going a direction beyond just like the labor and the workforce and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Looking at the employment growth uh, in the state, uh, again, coming out of the, the, the pandemic, the industry mix is not going to look like it did going into the pandemic. We're seeing some change and where we're seeing a lot of changes a lot of growth in this professional technical services category. It's a broad category. It includes things like engineering, architecture, legal, but also includes a lot of technical computer system design occupations. Seeing a lot of growth there, uh, outpacing the U.S. in terms of growth in that industry. So I've, what that kind of tells me is that's an industry that's been key to growth over the last, you know, in, in the 2010s. And Missouri maybe didn't take as much advantage of that at that time. A lot of that was very concentrated. Between 2010 and 2020, about half of this country's growth occurred in, in five states. Uh, if I can remember, California, New York, Washington, Texas, Florida. Is that five? Um, I, think I, <laughs> I think I got them all there. But uh, so a lot of those technical jobs really tended to concentrate in some areas, some, some coastal areas, and frankly, kind of expensive areas. And what a lot of these businesses are, are perhaps doing now are looking at, okay, where can we cut costs? Where can we find a talented workforce that maybe doesn't require this high level of wage because the housing isn't, the average home isn't a million dollars like it is in like San Jose or, or some Seattle, other places. So I think we're starting to see some growth there, which is, I think, very encouraging. And that's taking advantage of the skills set that we do have. We do have some great technical uh, companies and some great tech workforce that's available. And, and so I think we're starting to see some growth in that sector. Another one that we've seen a lot of growth in uh, is transportation and warehousing. I think this is um, a remnant of, you know, during the COVID shutdown, we did a lot more shopping online and continuing at that. So Amazon has really pretty aggressively expanded. A lot of uh, retailers and, and others have expanded in building warehouse space throughout the U.S. And Missouri being in the middle, I think, has, is a great advantage. And construction is another sector that's been uh, doing really well. And even as the housing market cools a little bit, housing was kind of driving the construction boom. It, that's cooled, but there's multifamily housing that's still being built and some major projects going on uh, throughout the state that's keeping construction employment up. So I think that's a sign of a, of a strong state economy when your construction employment is growing. So those are kind of the, some of the sectors that we've seen growing beyond the norm as we recover. And you've kind of cited the, the pandemic quite a bit. When you're looking at the data pre-pandemic and then as the pandemic hit and as we're coming out of it, and I'm going to try to phrase this question as best I can. In my head, it makes sense, but hopefully it comes out that way. I'm sure before the pandemic, we were moving in probably one direction. Pandemic hits, and I'm sure that probably derailed quite a lot of stuff. Yeah. What does the data tell us on how big of an impact 
the pandemic was to certain areas or education or inflation or this, that, and I'm sure it probably on all facets, but just from a research data perspective, what does it tell us? I think most economists, if they were to go back in history and look at where we were in say April, 2020 and where we are now, or even a year ago and say, we were heading in, staring into an abyss back in March and April, 2020. And a year later, two years later, we're here. Most of them would have said, we'll take it. The decline was sharp. It was deep. It was painful, but the recovery was really pretty rapid. Uh, nationally, Missouri even outpaced the, the nation in terms of recovery from the from the Great Recession in terms of employment and uh, I believe even GDP for a while. So the resilience uh, demonstrated by national level and in, in Missouri, I think was pretty amazing. And again, we, I alluded to earlier, some of the industry change that's occurred coming out of the pandemic. I still think we're dealing with some of the pain from the pandemic, this current issue and So we're talking, it's middle of December, 2022. You know, the current economy is all about, you know, fighting inflation. I think this inflation fight is still kind of a remnant from the recovery. You know, we put a lot of effort into recovering quickly. We had some supply chain issues as we recovered very quickly. Those things have kind of led to an environment where we're fighting inflation, where we are right now. So I still think there's a little bit of pain that we're kind of currently going through. But for the most part, I think most folks would say, hey, from what we were thought we were heading into in the spring of 2020, uh, we're in a pretty good spot. And you had just said that Missouri was outpacing the kind of national average in a lot of different areas. Was there any indication as to why Missouri was able to do that? Well, I think uh, we were one of the states that reopened earlier. Um, You know, states were, certain states uh, delayed their opening uh, from the shutdown, and we were pretty early in that. So we got a kind of, got a head start in that, that. I think that was probably the biggest factor and then again, I think looking at some of these industries that help grow the economy after the pandemic, transportation and warehousing comes to mind quickly. Missouri was a natural, and I think we saw a lot of employment growth there and a lot of investment in that sector. Really, during early parts of the recovery, I think that helped drive our growth. This might be retreading something that we already talked about, but what is the data telling us about the pandemic recession and the current economic environment how is that affecting DED or Missouri businesses in general? Yeah, I hate to be negative and keep talking about inflation, but that's really the, the story, unfortunately, right now. And um, you know, we, we did get some good news on that front uh, earlier this week. The inflation is starting to come back down. We feel like we've turned a corner, but I, I do think this inflationary environment is directly stems from the, the pandemic and the choices that we made to help us get out of a, a dark hole. I think that's there, but um, that is very impactful on Missourians going to the grocery store. You see it. You, you saw it when you went to the gas pump. Thankfully, that uh, aspect of it has started to come back down a little bit. And then the remedy to fighting inflation and pain that inflation causes is raising interest rates. And that affects directly Missouri businesses. If you know they want to get a loan to expand, you know, if I want to get a loan to, to buy a car or, or to get a mortgage, you know, the housing market was was white hot going into twenty middle of 2020, and then the rates started to go up, and that market is really cooled. And there's a huge economic impact there. You know, if your community is uh, has a plant that makes siding or windows or air conditioning units, things may have been really good for you for a while. And now maybe look, look ahead, things may not be, not be as good because that housing market has cooled so one of the things that really fascinates me that I love about economics is how, you know, it's, it's that butterfly flapping its wings, uh, causing a hurricane uh, across the globe. I mean, everything is so connected and the decisions that we make here impact us here. And we're starting to see that happen. You know, I think with the, the pandemic, it's we're, we're thankfully largely past the pandemic and, and things are starting to return to normal, but our current environment is still dealing with those decisions that we made. What does the data tell us that what direction are we heading in? Uh, I mean, like you said, like you can't yeah. really see the future. You can see the f- past a little bit better. But the the trends that you're currently looking at, what direction can we kind of expect to go in? In the near term, I think a lot of economists see a slower period ahead. There's a lot of debate out there whether or not we're headed for a recession. If the Fed continues to slow the economy down, do they go too far and cause a recession or does it just, is it a slow economy? So I think a lot of folks looking at 2023, especially the early part of 2023, see a slower economy. 
bigger picture, I'm just very bullish on Missouri. Obviously, that's you know, I probably wouldn't have, have, have taken this job if I wasn't a bullish uh, uh, person on Missouri's economy. And I think there's a lot going on in Missouri, and there's so much potential there. And, and again, I talk about you know those industries that we're starting to see growth in that that business and technical. We have that great manufacturing backbone to our state's economy, and a lot of that is tied to agriculture. That's not an industry that's prone to change. We're going to continue to, as consumers, we're going to continue to eat. So that that's a strong back backbone. We also have automobile manufacturing, defense jets uh, out of St. Louis. When, when you look at Missouri's economy, it is just so diverse. And to, as a result of that, we're generally not as prone to major when a recession hits nationally. We don't usually feel it as bad because you know our, our economy is so diverse. We don't have one industry that's weighing us down. With that diversity, I do think there's opportunities that we're starting to see some seeds coming up again in that professional and technical, I think, in, in, in just an entrepreneurship overall. We look at some areas like Cortex in St. Louis. That, that's just an, an area where entrepreneurs can go and, and connect with larger businesses and high, institutes of higher learning and kind of get those ideas percolating. And maybe that could be the next big business that, that grows and, and, and drives employment growth uh, in the state. I think that aspect of it is, is, is really important. It's one thing to help our businesses see the larger economy and maybe pivot if they need to. But I, in addition to that, I think we need to be growing these smaller businesses that could some, one day be a larger employer, helping them get off the ground and getting them started. And those new ideas, instead of those new ideas always seem to be percolating up on the coast, let's see if we can get some of those new ideas and some of those new businesses uh, growing here in Missouri. I, those are some, some of the things I'm really bullish about in the longer term. Is it a stretch to say that the future looks positive coming out of pandemic, out of recession, inflation, all that stuff? Are we going into a positive direction? Overall, we're heading in a positive direction. Now, we may see a, a speed bump again, early part of 2023, but overall, I think Missouri's heading in a, in a positive direction. I, I, there's just a lot of momentum for us. I think the Midwest in general, I think we're just going to see some more, some of that investment that seemed to be coastal it's starting to come back more towards the Midwest. And I think we're going to ride that wave in, in, in years ahead. Sounds great. Um, I kind of want to pull it back to the department itself. Yeah. You had talked about some of the strategic initiatives that are happening. What's going on in, in that realm? There's a lot going on uh, in that realm. And uh, in terms of uh, our economic research, you know, we're there to provide support uh, research for those uh, initiatives, whatever they may be. I know we are looking at the uh, the CHIPS Act is a big one that's out there right now at the national level. You know, when you think of CHIPS, you think, you know, Silicon Valley, you think of the Raleigh-Durham Research Triangle, and there's, th- those are things that are growing in, in certain areas. But you look at Missouri's potential in that industry, uh, it's there. We're a major player. We Maybe not on the actual semiconductors, but all the, the, the inputs and the components that go into manufacturing semiconductors, that is here. So that's an, an industry that has a lot of potential that Missouri could be a major a player in going forward. Let's see some of the other initiatives that we're working on. One of them is is kind of stepping back, working with our local partners and, and try to help them develop, it's called a SEDS, a community economic development strategy. And so that's really take them taking a hard look at their economy. What are, what are our industry strengths? What do we do as a region in, in terms of in our economy? What kind of jobs do we have? What do we export to the rest of the world? Uh, taking a good hard look at that and seeing what strengths are there. Uh, and how do we strengthen those strengths? What vulnerabilities are there? How do we counter that? How do we help businesses maybe pivot to adapt, adapt to those vulnerabilities? What are, again, those kind of maybe off the radar things that really maybe aren't there yet, but with some investment and with some attention, we can grow these industries and, and see them be drivers for our economy going forward. So those are just a couple of them that uh, off the top of my head that I know uh, research is going to play a, a, a big role in. Okay. I kind of feel like data and research is one of those things it can go any direction. And I think we could sit here and talk (laughs) all day about it. I kind of want to just open up the floor to you. Is there anything in this realm that you know that, hey, this is good information that people should have that we haven't touched upon yet? Well, we we were wide ranging. I think we covered a lot. You know, I would just make sure people know if I could put my contact information out there, um, jeff.pinkerton at ded.mo.gov. You know, I'm always interested in hearing what needs people have for as far as data is concerned and very try to be responsive and, and help people um, guide people to the data sources that are out there. So I would put that uh, out there for, uh, for starters. I think data is very, very important to kind of get a, a reading of where we are and how we, where we stand uh, in the world. But, it, you know, economic development, I think at, at its core is 
you know, a very personal game. It, it's, you know, people make, it's really about relationships, people knowing you know, the connections and people knowing who's in this industry or how does this connect to my partner on the other side of the state doing similar work. That's always going to be at the heart of it. And I think the, the data side, the data and the research that we bring just kind of supports that and really helps strengthen that. So we're, it's um, coming at it from a more rational perspective and it's not going to replace those relationships, but I think it can support that. So I, I think that's an important way to, to think about the research role and where it fits in. Yeah. And I think that that idea kind of goes hand in hand with my next question uh, wrapping us up here is, you know, the department's motto is helping Missourians prosper. Uh, so how does the the work that you and the, the rest of the research team do, how does it help push that motto into a reality? Yeah, uh, I, I love that motto. And to me, it speaks to more than just, you know, in economic development, we often think about what's the investment, what's a dollar amount, how many jobs. But that motto, you know, helping Missourians prosper to me gets deeper than that. It kind of talks about you know, it's not just helping Missourians get jobs. It's, you know, it speaks to the quality of the job. You know, it's helping people prosper, helping people understand how the economy is changing and what types of maybe training or education that they might want to pursue to so that they're better positioned uh, as an individual to, uh, uh, to take advantage of that. Uh, and also to help our, our communities to understand how the, the economy is changing and what they can do to pivot and maybe try to seek more diverse industry mix so their economy isn't so tied to one or two particular industries. That to me, it speaks to that it's broader than just the numbers. It really is a quantity and a, and a quality. And, and I think we, we talk about economic development. We used to separate economic development from like quality of life issues like parks and entertainment and, and, and those types of things. And anymore, and especially in this environment where people more and more can work wherever they want, Quality of life is an economic development issue. So any efforts that we do, what we what we do to improve and, and, and maintain our great quality of life that we have here in Missouri is an economic development issue. And I, th- and I think that speaks to, that, that's a part of helping Missourians prosper as well. I can't think of any other better way to wrap it up than that. That was very well said. And I know it's a very busy time for everybody. So I appreciate you taking it a little bit of it to sit down and speak with us about this topic. My pleasure, Eric. Anytime. Thank you for listening to this Inside Eco Devo episode featuring economic research efforts within the Missouri Department of Economic Development. To find out more about what's happening inside the department, including current programs and upcoming opportunities, be sure to subscribe to this podcast. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. And if there's an economic development topic you're interested in hearing more about, well, then let us know by emailing your questions and comments to ded.communications at ded.mo.gov. You can also comment directly on this episode, which is hosted on SoundCloud, but found everywhere else podcasts are found.